Well, there's a little feather to cat, and actually I did see Boots, the Confederate cat, up here yesterday, last night, eating and stuff, so. And I want to tell you a little story, too. Uh, you know, right now it's raining out, of course, like crazy. <laughs> it's Florida. Sunny, then rain. It, it, it actually was raining out like this before, then it was sunny, and I thought it was going to be all cleared up, and it came right back in. Um, and I'm waiting on uh, my starter motor. It should be coming in today, but we'll see how that works out for this car. But uh, I want to tell you something about uh, my experience. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a member of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, right? So, uh, And I'm also going to, going to be a member of the Sons of the American Revolution, uh, both ancestry out of South Carolina from my father's side, correct? Um, so I did not get my uh, membership renewal um, from the Sons of Confederate Veterans yet. And today it's... Um, the 24th of July, it expires on July 31st. Last year, I wrote my check on July 10th. So I thought, well, that was pretty unusual. So I actually called them over a week ago. They says, oh, we all sent them out and stuff. You should be getting yours really soon. But it doesn't take that long to go from Tennessee to Florida, maybe two or three days, three days max. So I still didn't get nothing. So I went and called them up the day before yesterday. There's a little onyx. That little onyx is a female, by the way. And they did not, um, I couldn't get, the day before yesterday, I couldn't get through um, to the membership area. It seemed like they're busy, you know, nobody answered the phone, no matter what. I said, I started thinking, hey, you know what, if it's me, there's probably a lot of members that didn't get the uh, their renewals in. Now, I'm just going to, you know, I don't know if this is the case or not, but I know that they did have to send out the magazine in a plastic wrapper, like a bag, because when they had just the paper on it, it would either get damaged or not delivered by the U.S. Post Office, because there's people in the Post Office that just won't deliver stuff that's Confederate. You know, that's, they're just haters, right? And, well, they're conditions. They're conditions. I'll get into that in a second. In fact, you looked at my last video about Lincoln's War. Um, you know, it explains a lot what's going on, because... It's not about the symbol. The money power doesn't fear the symbol. They fear what the limitations on their relationship, their cozy relationship between the money powers and the district of Colum corruption are. You know, bailing out the big banks, too big to fail, and that type of stuff would never occur under the Confederate Constitution. It was actually illegal to do that type of stuff under the Confederate Constitution. A lot of different things like that. So, anyway, yesterday I went online and um, I activated, you know, an email with a membership, so I made a payment with reoccurring payments and I made a donation to the museum of a hundred, you know. We're going to try a hundred first, and we'll still make more donations later. Um, so, I looked at pending transaction actions and I saw the one transaction show up, the membership, 30 bucks. And then yet today, nothing's showing up. It should be posted on my online banking. So, I don't know if that's an issue or not, but if it doesn't show up by tomorrow or the next day on my online banking, either they got a problem over there or what I'm really suspecting is uh, somebody's screwing with them. And that may be the case. So that's all the more reason to give to the SCV. You can do it through PayPal, whatever the hell it is. Um, it'll go through eventually. But uh, that's all the more reason you ought to fight this battle because it's it's no longer it's kind of like a basic premise. It's not like a political fight, and it's not heritage. It's more like um, the South actually did fight for independence of the same reasons why the American Revolution fought for independence. And you know, that's one of the reasons I'm going to be very glad to get into the Sons of the American Revolution. I should be. My application is um, there. Um, you know, the genealogist checked out all this stuff already. Um, I already paid the dues. It should be going through pretty soon. I actually have four going back to the South Carolina for uh, the Sons of the American Revolution. And two, three generations later, they are fighting for the Confederacy. Actually, if you look at some of the knives and uh, the Confederates and the guns, on the stock, they inscribed 1776. And um, the reason for that was not because the item was made in 1776. It was because 
1776 was all over again in 1861. So, I think I'm in actually kind of a unique position to make a lot of comments on a lot of stuff because uh, there's not. Well, being from raised and born and raised up north in New Jersey, <laughs> I'm kind of fly the Confederate flag on my property or something. Um, and also being an accountant uh, with a lot of high dollar people that I was their main accountant. Um, you know, you can use the word controller, but full asset protection basically. Um, more than just numbers. And uh, having this in a heritage and plus, you know, knowing the angles of how things are from New York, New Jersey, um, I think I'm kind of like in a unique position to, uh, you know, shed light on what's really going on. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's, I will see what's happening. I figured I'd just put this video out in this cat video and uh, maybe put it up in the title, you know, SCV being attacked, question <laughs> mark. I don't know, something like that. I, I could be. I, could, well, I think they always are being attacked one way or the other, at least in the media. Um, but, you know, that's one of the things where they want to have this museum pushed through because it's, you know, it gets me, too. The museum, I think the total budget on the museum is only $4 million. That's going to be located in Elm Springs, I think it is, near Columbia, I believe. Uh, you know, there's just people up in New Jersey, New York, that have second homes down in South Florida that are cost that much, for crying out loud. And I'm like, you know, why don't these people give them some money? Because it's like, it's like... Uh, you know, when you're attacking the uh, Confederate heritage, you're going to be attacking uh, Christopher Columbus Day. And, of course, uh, uh, Buford, uh, General Buford, you know, the one who designed the Confederate flag, he was half Italian, half French, so trying to get so many Italians up there to freaking give a few bucks, you know. But I don't know. It's like, <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. You know, it's like you got to, once they wake up, it's going to probably start flowing. But right now, it's kind of like uh, trying to get a rusty wheel unfrozen. That's what it's really like. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, some of the people up north, because actually if you look at the war between the states, it really wasn't the north that won. It was like certain elements of the money powers that won. And that's not including the newer money powers. Like the Italians and Jews came after the, the old money powers that were around Abe Lincoln, you know. So, you know, they were, they were immigrating at that time, but they really weren't established yet. So, but it's still a lot of the money power today is still in with the Italians and Jews. And I'm hoping that, you know, some of the contributions will come from that angle, too. Even though they don't have Confederate heritage, per se. So, I got Italian heritage and I got uh, Confederate heritage, so whatever. <laughs> but that's just another angle. There's so much money up north that, you know, if it came into the coffers of the SEV, it would... <laughs> it'd be bulging. <laughs> there would be, for crying out loud. I mean, it'd be ridiculous. But who the hell knows? Anyway, so just want to post this because, uh, uh, and yeah, all the kitty cats are fine. Uh, pauses there. Um, Dixie, they just fed them just their second tray, you know, just put out here. Um, that's the Onyx is a female, also. That for sure. I got to check to see what the other ones are. So they got another. About seven weeks before this one would get fixed. Um, so, you know, they will get fixed. <laughs> they will get the cat package, the neutering, and the rabies shots, and all that other stuff. For now, they're just out here just having whatever, doing their stuff. So, they will get fixed, all four of them. So, I'll be taking them in. But, uh, you know, I think I'm going to be able to, you know, hopefully I can uh, present some other angles on things out here on YouTube that. Uh, it's not that I have specific knowledge on things so much. It's that where I've done well in the quote-unquote accounting is partly from not just raw accounting per se. Although I'm pretty good at that part. But I know there's people that are a lot better than me at accounting accounting per se. But um, also where I seem to really excel is at organization skills and also just tenacity. You know, when I get onto something, man, I'm like... Uh, you know, a pit bull on something. And also setting up some of the systems, some of the more complicated accounting systems with custom reports and things. Um, there's a lot of avenues, but that's not the whole nine yards. I think some of my biggest strengths are because I work on cars and things like this, 
I have a common sense attitude where I can look at something that's more complicated and break it down into its most simple elements and see what the basic problem is and attack it from that angle. And that's where we're going to be going with this, um, you know, the, the war for southern independence and what it was really about and, uh, you know, what the United States was really formed for. You know, who it was really foreign for, you know, us, you know, us, we the people, not for the crony capitalists. That's why they don't like that flag. And they've conditioned people to say, oh, that symbol is this and that. Well, no, 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 not at all, not at all. So anyway, we'll see what happens. But um, I have a sneaking suspicion, although I've been noted to be sometimes a little overboard with the sneaking suspicions, that the SEV is being deliberately attacked. They have been, we know that they have been attacked through the the mailing, the mailing of their magazines and stuff. They had to put them in the plastic wrapper bags. Um, you know, maybe the memberships were in a big, um, you know, uh, whatever, package or something that were delivered to the mail and then somebody got them and they're holding them up or they're, they destroyed them or they did something or whatever the hell it is. Um, that's a, that could be. They could, their website could be being attacked somehow whereby, you know, when I'm making a payment and I'm, I'm not showing it posted on the bank the next day where it was just posted yesterday under pending. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But Dan, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, uh, they seem to be extremely efficient in Tennessee. Very honest people. Um, I've ordered from them products a number of times. I had absolutely no problem. Everything was packaged very nice, very labeled very nice. Came back in, in great condition. Um, and, uh, you know, the prices were good, all reasonable and stuff. And I don't think they would have screwed up not mailing out many of the members' renewals. I think, you know, when you're looking at what happened with the post office with the magazine of the SEV, now the magazines were constantly being torn up and not delivered by the post office until the SEV put them in plastic bags. Well, they could have been screwing around here. So, and you, you gotta watch out. This cat is so brave. I gotta watch where I'm stepping. I always, jeez, <laughs> this one gets too close. You're a little boo-boo, huh? Yeah, hey. This one's not afraid, right? You okay? This one's not, the other one I could pet too. The other two when they're eating. <laughs> the only one reading, right? You're a little girl like your mommy. You look just like your mommy. You're Onyx. I used to have a cat named Onyx. I forgot her name this one, Onyx. Here's the one that's all black. Here's Feather. Right, mommy? Anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, you clean your little kitten there. See them? <laughs> this one, uh, Onyx really bonds with the mommy more than the other two. The other two kind of hang out with each other. Paws and uh, Dixie, they hang out with each other a lot, but this one bonds with mommy the most. She's a female, too. They're both females, of course. Mommy's female. So, right? You get skin big, too, isn't it? This one was, like, that big not that long ago. <laughs> it was like a little freaking gerbil, man. <laughs> freaking growing up fast. I'm giving them good food, though. So, anyway. <laughs> 